think our group is growing again. The word is out. This is the way to go. We're going. Well, Katie is here with avocado. Okay, and I. That's because we've heard various comments from people like, "Oh, I'd never eat that, or I've never tried that, or I tried it and I didn't like it." Well. I'm going to tell you in a few minutes here why you need to include avocados. Eggs and avocados are like soul food for low carbs, okay? You can use them in all kinds of things. They're inexpensive. They're a wonderful source of healthy fat, okay? And you can uh, prepare them in lots of ways, and they're not hard to store or anything of that sort. You can travel with them, okay? So they're kind of the universal foods. Do you have to cook them? Do you have to cook them? No. You eat them raw. You eat them raw. You're going to have a chance to sample some. I, I hope. Boy, I should have. I should have bought more avocados. <laughs> Size of the group. While people are taking the seats back there, let me just get started on some of the basics here, so we don't run out of time. Uh, as I've said in all my groups, I'm a clinical psychologist. That's the doctor in Dr. Reed. I'm not a physician, and even if I were a physician, I wouldn't stand here and tell you, take my advice if you're under a doctor's care. What you all need to do is to go back and educate your doctors about this, okay? Because most of them have not had any substantial training, particularly lately, in nutrition. They're making their recommendations based on what they learned sometimes 20, 30, 40 years ago, okay? And it's not up to date. To challenge them to look at the recent research. Okay, there's some, there's a, a wonderful uh, article in uh, Circulation, which is the number one journal for physicians on heart disease. And just look for Darius Mosaparian. I know it's a tough name to remember, uh, but he has a review article. It's a gorgeous article and goes through everything about food, A to Z, and all the latest research. And you will see the findings that show that fats are not the problem. Carbohydrates are. So if you know something about research, you'll be able to follow that. All right? So don't take my medical advice. If you're on medication, especially, go talk to your doctor. Uh, what we've said in the past sessions is that though we've been told dietary fat is the problem, um, that increased fats and cholesterol lead to heart disease, uh, that weight loss only results from reducing calories. We've all heard that, you know, cut the calories, okay, over and over again. And exercise is going to take weight off. Um, sorry, folks, you know, it's good to exercise. There are a lot of good things, but don't expect long-term weight loss with exercise alone. You have to change what you eat. Uh, the only way and the advice we've been given, the only way to lose weight is go on a low-fat diet. How many people have heard that? It's all over the place. You will continue to hear that over and over and over again. Um, so, what really happens is that uh, when we replace fats with something, and it's not protein, it's going to be carbohydrates, so we get things like yogurt with more uh, sugar in it than a candy bar. Okay, so you shouldn't be eating any of this garbage. Well, counting calories is difficult to do. Who can manage their calories within 20 or 30 calories a day, each day, day after day? Can't do it. Okay, sorry. Um, and um, you can lose weight on a low-fat diet, a calorie-restricted diet. It happens. I've done it. You know. But what happens? Hunger wins out. You put the weight back on. Okay, plain and simple. So what you have to do is change what you eat, not how much you eat. Um, what we know now, and research actually over the last 15 years, some of this goes back 30 years, is that fat and cholesterol are not bad. Uh, you feel fuller longer when you add some fat in your diet. Uh, carbohydrates are what converts to fat, to body fat. We have this problem with fat in food, fat in our bodies, fat in our arteries. They're different things, but in general, people are concerned about not gaining weight through uh, increased fats. And for that, carbohydrates are the key. Um, fats and proteins, for the most part, do not convert to body fat. 
And it's easier to stay on a low carb diet long term because hunger is no longer a problem. Okay, until you can get to a diet that you're comfortable with and that you're not starving all the time, there's no way you're going to manage your weight long term. Okay, so you need to eat the foods that make you feel full, and that means fats. Uh, fat doesn't stimulate insulin. If you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, like half of the country is now, and like I was seven years ago when I was following the low-fat <laughs> recommendation, okay, putting on weight and my blood sugar was going up and what's going on, because I'm doing all the right things, cutting the fat out. Now, I needed to put the fat back in and cut the carbs out, and once I did that, blood sugar went right down. I'm no longer diabetic, thank you very much. You can talk to my doctor about that, who, who says, oh yeah, I guess you're doing something right there. Uh, yeah, keep that up. But would he ever recommend that to anybody else? Of course not, he'd be out of business. Sorry, that's the way it works. Um, so, uh, glucose become, uh, gets digested uh, and turned into and stored as, as body fat. Um, so the foods that we eat, this is, somebody asked me to replace the food pyramid. This is a much better food pyramid. With our vegetables down here, remember it used to be grains and bread and rice and all that kind of stuff. Okay, now it's vegetables. So if anybody says it's an unhealthy diet, invite them to have lunch with you and see what you eat, okay? Half your plate will, will be vegetables. Proteins, okay? There's all kinds of stuff about meat. You don't have to eat meat on a low carb diet if you don't want to. But meat, as we'll see in a few minutes, is a great source of nutrients, okay? There's nothing wrong with unprocessed meat. The problem with meat comes from curing and adding things like nitrates and things of that sort. And there is some evidence that eating a lot of processed meat, and you know, salami and all that kind of stuff, over a long period of time may increase your risk for some cancers by a very small amount, not a lot. Okay, you have to eat it like every day and a lot of it for it to show up, okay? So it's not that big a deal. Don't worry about it if you have some. Okay, I see you're worried already. <laughs> okay. But, you know, try to keep, you can buy unprocessed meats. I just bought ham uh, from Trader Joe's. It's uh, uncured ham. It just doesn't have any of the nitrates and other processing things. So look for uncured meat. If you want to make sausage that doesn't have stuff in it, go to your meat counter. Get a pound of ground pork, <laughs> and uh, that's just meat, <laughs> okay? There's nothing processed about it. Put a few spices in it and fry it up, and you got your own sausage, okay? Not a problem. We'll talk more about meats in another session. We're going to talk a lot about fruit and how to include them. Notice that's fewer in certain kinds of fruits, and then plenty of fats, and which you can get from nuts and things of that sort, and sour cream and mayonnaise and all that. And then dairy, you want to include that full fat dairy, not processed dairy. Uh, and small amounts of beans and legumes, peas and things of that sort, because they're fairly high in carbs. You can have some if you're doing a chili or something of that sort. But check out the carbs, the seven, eight, nine carbs for a half a cup, of, you know, so, you know, it's like a lot of things, you've got to balance that. And then way up the top, grains, the only grains I eat these days are in that Joseph bread, and you're going to get a chance to sample some of it. Somebody asked about cereals. I, I picked this up at uh, 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 Job Lot, uh, uh, one of the Red Mill, and this was, I think, $3.99. But this is organic uh, uh, <coughs> flaxseed meal. And we'll talk sometime about making cereal with this and coconut and uh, almonds, uh, and then put some nice full fat cream on it. You got yourself a nice crunchy cereal. This flaxseed is one of the best seeds around. We talked about seed oil, seeds and seed oil because it has omega-3 in it. And we'll talk at some point about the difference between omega-6, like you get in corn oil, mazola, and all that stuff, and omega-3, which you get in fish, okay, and grains like this. I'll pass this around. And when we're talking about uh, almonds and things of that sort, here's almond butter, okay. If you don't like peanuts, this is a little lower in carbs. Total, six grams uh, of, of carbs for two tablespoons, but you subtract the fiber, which is three, so you're down to three. So it's one and a half grams of carbohydrates per tablespoon. 
Uh, no, I think that's Trader Joe's. What does it say on the Trader Joe's. But you can find it at other places. I just have to check Pardon me? Um, a little better uh, than other butters, uh, but. Um, yeah, right. Uh, check the label, and you'll see that there are going to be some carbs in it. Okay. But subtract the fiber. And the nice thing about ground seeds is that you get all of the fiber. The problem with seed oils is you get none of the fiber, and we'll, we'll talk again about how, how they make seed oils. It's gross, I'll tell you. It's just awful what you have to do to a seed to get that oil out. Okay, so very briefly here, fruit. Okay, people say, oh, can I have fruit? Well, yeah, uh, but you've got to understand what you're eating, okay? Um, people say, well, how am I going to get vitamins and minerals if I don't eat fruit? Well, take a look at what's really in fruit. Oh, this is an apple, okay? Magnesium, 4.8 milligrams. Yeah, a small amount, not too bad. The carrot, 6.2, a little more. A piece of red meat, 15. Wow. And then liver, 18. So if you're really interested in getting your vitamins, are you going to eat fruit or are you going to eat meat? Okay, look at the rest of them. I won't read them all there, but uh, what you can begin to understand is that if you're really concerned about getting vitamins, you really should be eating liver. Okay, it's packed with vitamins. Absolutely. And we were told not to eat it because of what? Cholesterol. And now even the USDA, bless their, <laughs> their little uh, weak research minds, uh, have said cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern. That is to say that unless you have uh, a familial disease that you have very high cholesterol levels, don't worry about the cholesterol. Your body makes most of your cholesterol, mm -hmm. and if you eat more cholesterol, it just means your body doesn't have to make as much. You need cholesterol for your brain, for your cells, everything, okay? It's not a bad thing. Our body is made up of cholesterol, okay? That was the, the false concern about cholesterol in our arteries, and they didn't understand that it wasn't the fat that was making that happen. The carbs, okay? We've been over that. We'll go over that some more if we want. Okay, um, the kind of fruit in sugar, there's two, two major kinds of fruit. There's lots of uh, sugar. There's lots of different kinds of sugar, but understand the difference between glucose and fructose. If you eat table sugar, what are you getting? Pardon me? Fructose. fructose, half, and glucose, half. Okay, 50-50, okay, that's in regular table sugar, all right? So you say, well, what's the worst part of that? Quite frankly, it's the fructose that's the worst part, not the glucose. You get glucose in things like starch and, you know, pasta and things of that sort. That's the kind of sugar that circulates in your bloodstream and that your body has to figure out with insulin how to get rid of it, how to get it out of the bloodstream. So glucose isn't good because it's going to turn to fat, but fructose is even worse in some ways because it's your liver that has to digest your fructose. Well, a little bit with some fiber, whole fruit, not a problem, never has been, okay? What's happening today? What are you, not only young people, but people all over the world drinking a lot of it, and there's a picture up there. Soda, right. Soda is made with high fructose corn syrup, okay? The type of sugar they put in it. And the type of sugar is not glucose, not table sugar. It's fructose, which means your liver has to, has to take, get it out of your system. And a little bit's fine, a whole lot, what happens? Anybody hear of fatty liver disease? We have 15-year-olds with fatty liver disease, okay? Very similar, and there's another kind of thing that happens to your liver, cirrhosis, okay, you get that from what? Alcohol. Largely from alcohol. Uh, there are other things that can happen to your liver. Your liver is a very important organ, you do not want to damage it. So keep the amount of fructose in your diet low, okay, you can handle some, but when you get up there, like drinking three or four or five sodas a day, you're clearly damaging your liver, no question about it. I probably damage mine because 
it was low fat. So I used to suck that stuff down, right? We've all been there. And I told you, like last week, uh, juices, because the fibers <coughs> removed, same thing, fructose, okay? So four ounces of orange juice if you have to. I never eat it and drink it anymore. Uh, but don't have more than that, okay? Um, you're already eating a healthy food-based diet, a, a real food-based diet with plenty of protein and fat, but small amounts of fructose won't cause that. The harmful effects <laughs> apply to fructose from added sugars, not real foods. Uh, fruit juice is a different story. There's no fiber in it. contains pretty much the same amount of sugar as Coca-Cola. Fruit is okay. Juice is not. Uh, so, let's look at some fruit. There they are. What's your favorite fruit? What's everybody's favorite fruit? Banana. Bananas. <laughs> How does it stack up there? 24 grams of carbohydrates. I limit my carbs to 20 a day. One banana and I'm done. <laughs> okay? Oh, and the other ones at the top of the list, grapes. Grapes and bananas. Why do people like those things? Because we're addicted to sugar. Okay? So you're going to get as much sugar as you can, all right? And you can say, oh, I'm eating fruit. Remember the guy who went on an all fruit diet? Charge of Apple? Okay, Steve Jobs? I mean, I don't want to denigrate him, but there's a lot of suspicion because he used to eat an all fruit diet all the time. Ended up with pancreatic cancer, and there are some potential links between the two, okay? Can't say. You know, that that's what causes cancer. But eating an all fruit diet is not a good way to go, let me tell you. Okay? Um, down to an apple, still 21. How far down do you have to go before you get into something in the reasonable range? Huh? Yeah, strawberries maybe, okay? And how many people suck on lemons? Too many, right? They knew they probably had sugar. Right? Well, here's, here's the rest of the story. You can get small amounts of carbs in some berries, like blackberries and raspberries, pretty low. Okay. Rhubarb, everybody puts sugar on that, so that doesn't count. Cranberry. <laughs> had cranberry juice or whatever. And then looked at the label. It's loaded with sugar, added sugar, because if you drink straight cranberry juice, no sugar added, you don't like it. Okay? Um, then in the medium category, Strawberries, some melons, things of that sort, and start getting up there, and you do apples, seven or eight, and blueberries, I know they're often depicted as low carb, they are, but um, and then back up to grapes and bananas. So if you get your carb detector going, you know, you're like, oh, I know how much carbs are in those, okay? And it's just a matter of, you know, looking at labels and looking on the web and seeing what's in what and all that kind of stuff. After a while, you get pretty savvy about it. And this thing right here, that's going to tell you how many carbs, right? If it tastes sweet, guess what? There's sugar in it. Okay, plain and simple. But the nice thing is that when you cut sugar out of your diet, even a little bit tastes really sweet. Okay, when I have a strawberry now, I really enjoy it. Because I don't have anything else with a lot of sugar in it. So a little bit of sugar tastes really good. Okay. If you like research, this is a fabulous website. It's, very, it's all done in little uh, episodes of the picture and the description and one thing or another. There's a lot of stuff on low-carb eating there. But, but the best thing about um, Authority Nutrition is that every single statement he makes is backed up with the research. And it gives you a link directly to the journal article. Okay, you don't have to go searching, it's right there. So if you're somebody who thinks that science is important, that's the website to go to. Okay. And he has, I was reading some, some more of his stuff than I've read this before. He's, he's not, uh, he doesn't say, you know, low-carb diets are the, you know, the salvation of mankind. Uh, he understands that you can go off <laughs> and overdo low-carb and things of that sort. Uh, you have to manage what you eat, is what he's saying. And, uh, uh, don't just take low carb as your religion <coughs> in a sense, but understand how to make food choices that make sense for you and what your body does, okay? Um, and they contain more potassium than bananas, um, very high in that, and that's linked to lower blood pressure and uh, heart disease, kidney failure, okay? So the benefits, 
uh, are fat. 77% of its calories are from fat. The majority is folic acid. And what that is, but that, that's a fat found in olive oil. Okay, so this is not a saturated fat, it's a monosaturated fat that, um, that you, the same fat that you get in olive oil. Okay. And in fact, you can get uh, avocado oil and cook with it just like you would with olive oil. Um, and because it's monosaturated, it's um, resistant to oxidation when heated. Okay? And we talked a lot about how frying anything you should do it in coconut oil, but or butter, okay, or lard, okay, animal fat, because that will not smoke and oxidize and create all kinds of problems. If you want to get into the science of that, we can. But um, uh, olive oil shouldn't be used at high heat, okay, because it's got some of the problems. And avocado oil, you shouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't do, uh, uh, well, what wouldn't you do in olive oil? Something that requires high heat. Sear a steak. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? I wouldn't sear a steak in olive oil. No, you, you wouldn't do a steak in olive oil, oil. You're right, or, or avocado oil. Avocado oil is very expensive, too, so you're not going to do that. Okay, come on up, Danny. Um, so because of the antioxidants, we've all heard about antioxidants in food, um, they also in, include nutrients called lutein, and I can't even pronounce uh, zeaxanthin, <laughs> which is critically important for eye health, okay? So this really, you can't go wrong with avocados. They got just about everything you need in them. And now please <coughs> gonna tell us how to come up and stand over here where we can get you on camera. Uh, tell us about avocados. So, um, I, it was one of those things that I just tried because I got guacamole at a Mexican restaurant and liked it. Um, and um, there's a, a episode of Good Eats. I don't know if anyone ever watched that on the Food Network where he focused on avocados and um, talked about all the different things that you can do with them. Um, and so I figured, okay, well, it's a little carb, I'll incorporate it into my diet. I use it as a side dish. I will just take it and I'm going to demonstrate how to open them and how to put together the guacamole real quick um, and let everybody taste it, what it tastes like, just right out of the flesh um, in a couple of seconds. Um, but I just put it with a little bit of salt, sometimes some hot sauce on it, and I'll eat that as a side dish with a piece of steak. And it's super, super filling. Uh, but you can mix it with butter, with mayonnaise and make it as a spread. Um, you can put it in a salad. You know, it's very, very, very versatile. Um, I also sometimes will make a, um, if I'm feeling I want some Asian kind of food, I'll, I'll do edamame. I don't know if you've ever had edamame. They sell it in the frozen food section. It's a little higher in carbs, but not too, too bad, much to subtract the fiber. And I'll take an avocado, dice it, mix it with the edamame, and then make a dressing out of soy and vinegar and have that for dinner. <laughs> it's, it's really good. It kind of herbs that that craving you get for Chinese food or, or Japanese food. Um, so they, they are incredibly versatile. It's just a matter of sort of getting over the, how the heck do you get into the fruit? Because, <laughs> um, I, and I, I've shown my mother how to do this, and she, she every time I, I go over there, and she's still trying to like cut around the seed with her paring knife, because she doesn't believe in using a chef's knife. So she's trying to cut around it. But I'm going to show you the easiest way to get the seed out. And if someone wants to try it, we have plenty of avocados. You can try it. It's actually very easy. The avocado does need to be ripe, though. Because if it's a hard avocado, the seed's not coming out. Um, Great way to get aggression out, too. When I went to the market last week, the bar so Yeah. Like, how can you pick a good avocado? Because there's different shades of yep. the, the feel of it? Or no? It's the feel. You want it to be a little bit squishy should have some give to it. Um, you don't want it to be hard. Oh, wow. um, if you're not going to eat it right away, you can get a hard one and then keep it on your counter. If you put it in the refrigerator, it's going to stop the ripening. So um, a lot of times in the market, you'll find ones that are like squishy, squishy. You don't want those. Um, they're overripe. They've probably been sitting around for too long. And they, they kind of get a little bit bitter, I find, when they um, when they've been sitting too long and they, they've oxidized inside. 
um, inside the, the actual skin of the avocado. Uh, the other thing you can do, and this is Alton Brown's suggestion, is to take the, the tip off and look at the color on the inside. And I'll, I'll show you that in the kitchen too. And that actually does work, I've tried it. Um, and so, you know, actually, they've got one here. Uh, demonstrate. Yeah. This is the riper one, so it won't fall apart. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of give, so I, I can I can dent my finger into it. Okay. And so. So what you want to do, and you can use a big chef knife or you can use one of these. If you want to, start at the top and cut down, and you're going to feel resistance because there's a pit in the middle. And then you just. Cut around. Okay. So now you have this pit. And this is the fun part. You give it a whack with your knife. So hold it in your hand with you know a good grip. And then boom. And then just give it a twist. Yep. Wow. And it comes right out. <laughs> and that's it. And then use paper towel and something to pull it out, but I would. And then you have a couple of options. To get the nice little strips that you get at a restaurant, you just cut through. You don't want to cut through the flesh uh, to the skin. You just want to get right to the, to the bottom of it. Do that. And then you can either pop it out like that, pops right out, or you can take a spoon and dig around it. And so, one thing to remember with these, they're like apples. When you cut an apple, it's going to oxidize and turn brown really quickly. Same principle, okay? So there are different things that people have said you can try. Some people say you can pit in, it's going to stop it. The thing that I found that works best is lime juice. Lime juice or lemon juice. And when you're making guacamole, you're putting lime juice in it anyway. <laughs> so that will help. So if you're not going to use half an avocado right away, what I suggest, and this, this we usually keep it for a day, maybe two, sprinkle a little bit of lime juice on it, and then take saran wrap. You want to keep the oxygen out and tighten it real tight so that there's no surface area that's exposed to air, and then put it in the refrigerator. <coughs> and that way, you know, you should be able to, to get another day or two out of it. And just so you know, if it does turn brown. It's okay. It's not going to kill you. No, it you doesn't take that. Okay. It's just more of an aesthetic thing. Yeah, yeah. it just doesn't look as pretty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and if you make guacamole and it starts to turn a little brown, just scrape the top off, because it's green underneath. Right. That's what I do. I, I do a pack of one, yep. spray. And you're good to go. Yep. So, really not a problem. Yeah. So, if you want to come into the kitchen, we will show you. I had almost everything prepped except the avocados, which those will take a couple seconds. We'll throw together some guacamole, and then I will cut open a few avocados. If you want to taste that with a little bit of salt. Try it. Okay, but when you come up, there are certain things that are pretty similar um, that you're going to find in most places. Onion. Um, I use the shallot because um, shallots tend to be a little um, less bitey. Yeah. They're, they're a little smoother on the palate. A tomato that I took the seeds out of. So I cut it in quarters and then took a spoon and, and took the seeds out and then chopped it because I don't want water in guacamole. Um, there's some green onion in here. You can use cilantro if you want. Not everybody likes cilantro. For some people cilantro oh, tastes like soap. You can use parsley. Um, I did put some green onions in here. And then I took uh, some of the rind of the lime and cut it off. I didn't get any of the pith, which is the white part. I just mm. shaved the outside and then chopped that up because that's where all your lime flavor is. We're going to put juice in, but I like my guac really limey. Um, like for me, that's, that's where it's at. Um, so you can add garlic. You can add hot pepper. When I make it for myself, I'll usually add jalapeno or serrano because um, I like it a little bit of a kick, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's a Saturday morning. Uh, I'm not going to do that to everybody. Uh -huh. There are different kinds of avocados. Hots are the most common that you're going to find, and they tend to look like this. Um, there's also the Florida avocados, which are bigger, 
Um, they are lower in fat. Uh, and frankly, I don't think they taste as good. Um, they, they, they just don't have the same butteriness. Where did these come from? Do you know? These are probably from Mexico at this time of the year. Yeah, these are from Mexico. Uh, if you're ever in California, um, you know, they grow everywhere out there. Um, and it's, it's life altering <laughs> when you can have them. This is a tree. It grows on a tree. It grows on a tree. Yep, people have this in their backyard. Um, just like we have apple trees and pear trees out here. Mm -hmm. So, and that was just the the little stem that had fallen in that I'm taking out. You could grow your own avocados. Just take a pit, <laughs> put it in a paper cup, add some water, and wait. Yep. Yeah. In about yeah, three weeks, water. they'll start sprouting. And uh, if you're really good, I've seen people who've raised them to four or five feet. Oh, okay, wow. little trees. But unfortunately, in order to get an avocado, you got to plant them outdoors, and they're not going to work. But yeah, not in, like not in New way. England. They like the right. warm weather, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I, in here I have the flesh of the <coughs> avocado. I'm going to add in all the goodies that I had chopped up before. And then this is a lime, the lime that I had cut everything off of. And I'm just going to roll it on the counter. It has to be lime or lemon. You can use lemon. lemon. I like lime better, but you can totally use lemon if you want. Um, <coughs> and all I'm going to do here... And you just cut this. And I'm just gonna squeeze this in. And with guacamole, you know, if you let it sit for a while, it just gets better in flavor. Um, so, you know, when I make this for football on Sundays, I usually make it on, in the morning and then let it sit in the fridge. And by game time, it's good. Mash it with a fork. I usually use this little thing, which is a Pampered Chef masher thing. And then it's just, again, stress relief. And you can get it as chunky or as smooth, yeah. smooth as you want. Um, some people don't add tomato to theirs. That's perfectly fine. Some people add a little bit of sour cream to theirs because they want it even creamier. Um, People add garlic, they can add roasted garlic. Some restaurants, um, the, there's a restaurant, um, Fairhaven, the Frontera Grill, they'll add mango to theirs. So, I mean, the sky is really the limit with this. And once it's mixed, you add a little bit of salt, which, salt really does enhance the flavor of it. I'm not gonna add too much just because I don't know if anyone's on. And they have like salt and lemon together. I think it's good. Too. Yep, yep. So, um, if you keep it in the fridge with um, plastic wrap on it, covered, right, cover it right to the surface. Mm -hmm. It'll last you a couple days in the fridge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Most people don't finish finish it. Any. Yeah. yeah. They don't. They don't leave any. Yeah. Um, and you know, <coughs> if you have a, if you're having a party, this this goes well with chips. It goes well with pork rinds. Dave made some low carb chips. For everyone oh, to try yeah. so we'll go ahead and scoop some of that out does anyone want to try the avocado on its own with a little bit of salt i do yeah okay. so. oops sorry yeah. 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 did you try some yeah, I did. good yeah. for you and say there's no spices in it, it really tastes spicy. Yeah. Well, Katie's uh, finishing up. Let's give her a round of applause. Uh, uh, you know, I bring some recipes here, but if you have access to the internet, there are hundreds of recipes. And all you have to do, you know how to use Google, the search engine? You know, type in avocado recipe and you will see hundreds of uh, you do uh, you might want to add the word low carb however because there are avocado recipes that they're not concerned about carbohydrates so they put all kinds Thank of you, stuff in it that shouldn't you. be there but for the most part any kind of anything with avocado are you getting to the point where you kind of tell what's a high carb food you know if it has you know flour or sugar in it okay if it has root vegetables in it um, once you get some familiarity with what, what, how many carbs there are in food, 
Start with one of those charts that are all over the place, okay? You know, common carbohydrate content of common vegetables, okay? And you learn that carrots are higher, things like asparagus and broccoli, cauliflower will be your, we should do a whole thing on cauliflower because there's a million things you can make out of cauliflower, including, quote, mock mashed potatoes, add some cheese and some cream, wonderful, okay? All kinds of stuff expensive like that. So, right now. You, you know, pardon me? Cauliflower is expensive. Well, it, it has been. Guess why? Cauliflower prices are because it's going below the car. Okay. Sorry. I mean, you, know, you want to get in there? It was five dollars yesterday, but I I bought some uh, for two ninety nine within the last couple weeks. I can't tell you where. It might have been fresh food. So two for five at Whole Foods. All right. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you get them on sale. What I recommend with cauliflower is cook them first. You can just steam them or whatever. You can do the whole thing if you don't want to cut it up. Uh, but uh, freeze them, okay? And then then you don't have to work. So you get a bunch that's on sale. You have a bunch of you know bags of you know, frozen cauliflower. And you take them out, throw them out in the microwave, and then make whatever you want with it. So think of I think of cauliflower as like potatoes. The other recipe that I just tried on Thursday was the uh, radish hash browns. Have you had those? Yeah, I love those. They're wonderful. I make them every week. Yeah. And I use, you know, and the difference is remarkable between and the carbs. You make them with potatoes, it's 23 grams of carbs. Radish is three. Okay, really. Peppers and onions, which give it all the flavor. And, you know, I used to eat the hash browns all the time, and you end up, you know, an hour later feeling like, uh, like lead because all of that, all the carbs in your stomach. But the radishes, because they do not have high amounts of carbohydrates, it's just lighter, and you get all the flavor without the bad stuff at the end. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So, we're just a little bit over our time. Thank you all for coming. Uh, uh, do we have an idea next week? Katie, thoughts for next week. What do you want to hear about? I'm going to do cereal, vegetables. Cereal. Uh, cereal? You want to do some cereal stuff? Yeah. Breakfast okay. ideas. Breakfast. Yeah. More breakfast stuff. Yeah. Okay. Breakfast, cereal, that's Okay. Maybe and we then could, Katie, we'll, you have to do a, a thing on Snacks? Okay. And snacks, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll uh, try making some cereal using uh, some of the black seed. And you can get bowls and spoons and you can try it. At some point, to maybe have like a, like a social eating out survival guide type thing? Like how to, how to, how to survive a restaurant? Yeah, we'll all take, we'll take a trip to Friendly's. <laughs> <laughs>